from the same people that brought you where is the uh, dividing line for North and South County comes this question. Okay. He writes in, he says, do you stop and take the time to pick, uh, to bend down and pick up a penny? No. What if it was two pennies? No. What if no. it was a nickel? No. I'm not picking up any change on the What is your monetary minimum, he wants to know. And so we're like, this is a great KZOZ.com poll question. So this is the KZOZ.com poll question right now, okay? Is what is the minimum that you will bend over and pick up? <laughs> somebody, the lowest, somebody just wrote in, is it a Democrat? The, <laughs> Does that, does that even make sense? <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, I don't. I don't understand it. Well, how does that make sense? Well, he's just making uh, outside a joke. the line that that's what he's that, just making. That's what people do now is they just spew the words Republican and Democrat in vitriol on social media. I think he's just making a joke because of the timing of the shutdown and everything with the government. I don't know. Oh, okay. But is it, is it a Republican or a Democrat for that matter? If that's the case, well, By the it was. Way, it was. It was, it was the Democrats that didn't that voted against it to not, to shut down the country. As it as a as a sidebar, since you brought it up, I'm totally cool with the government being shut down because I don't think it does a really good job of running itself, anyways. So, like, go ahead, dude, whatever. Take a few weeks off. You guys do it all the time. I don't anyways. know what it really means, but you hear things like, well, the military isn't going to get what they need. We have people that are in other countries that aren't going to. I mean, so I don't know what it actually means to shut down. I heard in 2013, the Obama administration really wanted to show what it was like. to. So they put barricades up in mm. front of the veterans memorials. And yeah. They're not doing that this time. That was something they didn't have to do. They decided to do. You could still go to the veterans they memorial. They wanted to make a big deal You could still go to the memorial it. in Washington, D.C. Uh, they're not going to be there to pick up the trash, but it'll still be an open... I don't know. So they wanted to make a big deal about it. So I don't really know what it means, national except parks, for they couldn't come together for a budget. Closed. And so there's, you know, national parks will remain open uh, during this shutdown, okay. unlike the last one. So that's what I heard. It's, so. it's like, it's like, it's like I, don't, I don't really care that the government shut it. Like, they, you understand, people, that they take recesses all the time, and it's like for long periods of time, like 12 weeks, they'll just take off. That is be like whatever. We're, this is our vacation. Well, well, that's that's those are congressmen and senators. Yeah. But this is actually shutting down the government. But and they're, they're the not ones, getting paid. They're the ones that are responsible for the shutdown, right? Exactly. Yes. Now, they have federal, to federal approve a budget so it can stay open. Federal employees, it sucks for them because they're shut down and they're not getting paid. So yes, I'm, I'm sorry if you're a federal employee that you do not get a paycheck. That really sucks to be you. But you know what? Whatever, it's the company you work for. Sometimes you choose a bad company to work for. In this case, it just so happens. Typically happened. working for the federal government, you have great benefits. You're <laughs> right. like, I work for the government. I'm like, we you read our time. He works at the hospital. Unless you know, people right? unless down. people can't get along, then it's your problem. All right, back to the poll question. So what is the uh, the lowest amount of denomination that you would pick up? And I, I was looking at the poll question here, and uh, we got a bunch of options for you. And I think mine's $5. I don't. I don't. I've, I've walked. You're past, not picking up a dollar. I've walked past dollar bills before. Yeah, I have. Why? I don't know. I'm very suspect about things like that. And even too a five dollar bill, I'd be, be very suspect. Like there's something going on. I'm looking around. I don't know. I don't trust things like that. Okay, I, so you especially pick, in this world we live in now, you pick up know. a five dollar bill. Does it immediately go in your pocket, or do you hold it out to see if somebody around you may have lost that five dollar bill? Well, that's a good yeah, question. You're like you're like um. Because this is what I would do. If a $5 bill, a dollar bill, i just pick it up and put it in my pocket. And I would say that my minimum, since we're here, would probably be a dime. I'd pick up a dime if I saw it. Really? Yeah, I don't care. You're walking downtown, you see a dime, you're going to pick it up? If, I'm, if I see a dime, I don't know if I'd stop and bend over. Probably not a dime, but a quarter, I would stop. So I would say... The, the minimum is a quarter. No, let me. Let's just say I'm I'm scrapped. I'm strapped, and I have you know for some reason I really need it. I'll, I would pick it up. But for the most, I've walked past change. I've walked past dollar bills before. But I think if a five was there, I'd be I'd probably pick that up because I think I could actually do something with that. What do you, What do you buy for a dollar nowadays? You know, it's just it's, it's collectively you get five of them and you could buy something. Well, yeah, I guess if there was five of them in a row, I would pick up all five. Yeah, but that's the thing is every every nickel counts. You know what I mean? I I mean my wife. Notoriously calls me a penny pincher, and whenever she sees a penny on the ground, she says, "Oop, you're missing out on an opportunity there." As a joke, but sometimes I'll, I will I will call her out on her BS, and I will pick up the penny just to, just to prove a point because every little bit counts. Uh, but uh, five dollar bill is is you you would would you what would you do with it? You said it was a good question, but you didn't answer the question. 
I had to just put it in my pocket. I mean, it's right away. It yeah. goes in your pocket. Right I'm not going to look around. I mean, I would look around. What are you going to go? Hey, did you drop five dollars? Like, oh, I did. Yeah, right. Sure, I'd be, you did. I'd be like, uh, sure I, mean, I would just kind of look chunk. around to see if anybody looks startled that I'm holding a five dollar bill out, and they'd be like, oh, I dropped that. If they came up to me and then they said they dropped it, I would I would give them. The yeah, if somebody saw me pick it up, they came over and said, "Hey, I dropped that." I was like, "All right, well." Oh, thanks. You got my five dollar bill. But well, you would you would, but it would already be in your pocket. I don't know. It's gross. It's on it, the ground. It would already be in your. I pocket. I don't know if I'd want to pick it up because it's you know on the ground. It's well, gross. you're really wishy washy with. I this. mean, it depends. If we're outside, it's one thing. If you're inside and it's a clean place, and I probably pick it up. Fence sitter on this. A twenty for sure. I a twenty. Ten. Twenty. Ten, yeah. I said five, but yeah. Yeah, but now you're going back. You're scaling back. You're five. No, I'm saying, I'm saying I guarantee I don't care where I'm at. Just like you wouldn't answer the up. question if it would go into your pocket right away or if you would kind of hold it out. I don't think I'm holding it out. I'm, I am not holding okay. it out. Okay. I'm glad I finally got you around to answering that question. I have a friend that drops money all the time. He, I've got like 50 bucks off him so far. Really? Because he's an idiot. It goes right in your pocket? Doesn't pay attention. Right, right. in my pocket. That's... I know it's his. I'm not giving Hey, those are the friends you keep. <laughs> Things we didn't get to. In hashtag form with Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Okay, the first thing that we didn't get to that we got to get to is we got to call somebody and award these tickets. Now, we have drawn the name of the random utopian texter because we've been all weekend long, we've been asking you to text utopia to 543. 3693. Now, if you've done that over the course of the weekend, you're automatically entered to win a four-pack of tickets to see David Byrne at the Santa Barbara Bowl. All right? That's how it works. Very easy. We're going to call you. You got the number? I do have the number. All right. Here we go. Now, this person entered in on the 19th, which I guess was Friday, at 649. <laughs> People are texting now. I told you how to fix this. I know. I didn't double click on it. Or just hit reply. Jeff's having a hard time because every time somebody texts, which a lot of people are texting, it, it moves okay. the screen. Right. Uh, now, now look what we got. Okay, we're going to call Seth because he's the one that called it, that texted at 649. All right. Not Seth that we've worked. No, no, another Seth. Now, this Seth uh, entered on Friday afternoon. Friday no, morning? Friday morning at 649. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see if he answers the phone. Randomly drawn, by the way. Oh, I think I, think I missed dialed on that. I love dialing numbers on the radio. Why is it giving me, like, dual numbers? Is there, like, I have a sticky five over here or something. I don't know. Do you want me to do this? Maybe, because... Yeah, it dials five twice whenever I hit five once. Listen, you moron. And five is kind of important because... Write the phone number down. Write it down and I'll dial it. On my side. Gosh. I got a, I can dial. Dialing's fun! Now I know why you don't want to teach your daughter to write or dial the phone because it's an obsolete well, thing. Well, that time it didn't do it. Hold on a second. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't have to do it. Of course it didn't. Just be more gentle with it. All right, we're giving away I tickets. I just did it eight twice! Are we just <laughs> giving... America in Will you give me the damn thing so I can do it? It's ridiculous already. All right. David Byrne, Santa Barbara Bowl, Talking Heads, all right? It's like the eight and the five. Something spilt in there. Well, maybe quit spilling. Oh, that got the wrong word. I guess it is harder than it looks. Um, I mean, the interface is, I mean, brand new, so it shouldn't have these problems. Quit spilling stuff over there. That's why they don't want food in the studio. Especially the 80 spot on it that says Telos. You eat over there like, like a buffet it looks every like, day. It looks like Miami Vice is I, written on there. I went went to sit in your chair. I moved the cushion that you sit on, and there was so much crumbs down there. It made me almost vomit. Air don't crumbs. Move that, don't move that cushion ever. So gross. Worse than eating sashimi. <laughs> <laughs> Seth <sighs> Williams is who we're calling. Come on, Seth! Oh, this is Seth. Well, for a moving company. Seth, are you there? Yeah. Hey, it's Jeff and Jeremy. How's it going, man? Hey, what's happening? Nothing much. What's uh, going on with you, man? What's up? How's your Monday? It's good, man. You know what? You're really good at spelling compared to a lot of KZOZ listeners because you actually typed in the word utopia, U-T-O-P-I-A, and like, <laughs> unlike... I would say 30% of the uh, people who tried to enter and misspelled Utopia. Right so congratulations, Seth. You won four pack of tickets to see David Byrne at the Santa Barbara Bowl. Okay? Well, 
Nice, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks, awesome. That's Thanks, a sir. good way to start the week, right? That's an excellent way to start the week. Thank you, guys. All right, hold on the line. We're going to some, uh, pass some information along to you on what you need to do to claim those tickets. Remember that story about the Eagles and they were suing Hotel California, the hotel actually in Mexico, and the because best, they were putting the Hotel move, California on That things. is the best thing that ever happened to that hotel because people, this is like a small hotel in a remote part of Mexico. Right. Not, not a lot of people visit this area. And I went to Mexico near the hotel this, this last fall and I wanted to go and I had everybody convinced until the State Department said, hey, be careful. They're don't beheading travel. people yeah. down there. Don't, don't, so then my don't wife beheaded and in, in Mexico. my cousin and her, everybody was like, no, let's not leave the resort too far. And I'm like, oh, come on. It's going to be fine. How far of a drive would that have been? It would have been uh, about an hour and 20 minutes from where we were at. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't risk it was an about hour and 20 an hour minutes outside of Cabo and we're we're about 20 minutes outside of downtown Cabo. I would not risk an hour and 20 minutes on Mexican roads. I, well, you I, rent a car. Uh, I'm like, I'm it's, like, it's a Jeep. They maybe, have Jeeps and maybe stuff. Maybe like, you know. Like, <laughs> if I'm stuck in a traffic jam in Cancun or something. Listen, I talked to everybody at the hotel. They said it's so safe there. They go, it's a great little tourist town. They're, they're really welcoming tourists. There's a lot of uh, p- p- police presence because they want to make sure that it's safe there, just like there is here in Cabo. Is it an hour and tw- Oh, at that place where the Hotel California is? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I guess it's beautiful. It's up on the Pacific Ocean, yada, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Yeah, but Anyways. it's a small town. Um, uh, it's a small hotel. And they call themselves Hotel California. And Eagles yeah. were like, we're going to crush. David is going to crush Goliath. Or Goliath is going to crush David into the sand that it sits on on the shores of the Pacific Ocean. It's in Todo Santos, Mexico. Uh, they call themselves mm, Hotel Fabiola, California. Fabiola Ramirez just chimed in. She said you said that wrong. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Todo, I couldn't say it as good as her. Todo Santos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's been around. The hotel's been around since like the late 20s, early 30s. And uh, the Eagles had filed this trademark infringement lawsuit against a company in Mexico. Like, they have no tie to the United States. So I don't know. That was our thing. Is like, how do you actually get this to happen? Like, okay, yeah. our laws, our judicial system works in this country. It doesn't work in well, other countries. And it's, and it's super complex to the point where we ask Jeff Stolberg all the time about different cases outside of the state of California. And he's like, dude, I have no idea how this would be ruled on in another state because I only deal with California law. I could not imagine how complex it is when you're dealing with Mexican law. Because have you ever been to Mexico? They steal everything that is trademarked. Yeah, everything. Every, Every NFL <laughs> team could sue the shit. I mean, just sue them. Well, that's the second time I won't say that word today. No, that's okay. But uh, means you're comfortable in your element. Now. Yes, I'm very. I'm always comfortable it's with very you. Very ingratiating. So, anyways, um, you know, they were saying that they were they were trying to use the Hotel California, uh, you know, merchandise and uh, marketing to try to lure people from the United States to stay at their hotel. That's what the Eagles were saying. Well, guess what? Uh, both attorneys uh, for the band and the hotel have confirmed that the lawsuit has been dropped uh, by you know mutual terms. Yeah, because it's... Okay, here's the thing. is you, The hotel... The Eagles are dumb. There's a little more here. Hold on. The Hotel California and its affiliates will continue using the name, service mark, and trademark Hotel California in Mexico. The hotel and its affiliates continue to own some 28 valid Mexican trademark registrations, uh, Hotel California, in various meanings. Yeah, the Eagles are dumb for this because, like, they just... They took this thing that they're against... They gave it a bunch of publicity, and now, where is it? Todos Santos? Yeah. If anything, I say... You see how I said that? <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. It's uh, Todos Santos. Todos todo Santos. Todo and, Santos. And Todos Santos, a place that nobody even knows exists. Santos. And now people are willing to risk their lives taking an hour and 20-minute trip north of Cabo San Lucas to go to this place right. to see what it's all about. You gave them a ton of free advertising. If anything, Good job, Eagles. I would have done something with them, and I would have almost made it seem like this was Hotel California. I mean, it would have been such a better yeah. spin to do joint, something like joint that. Joint marketing and, venture? I mean, come on. It's better to go positive than negative, right? Hi, you're on the air. What do you want to say? Hey, uh, it's Ron. Just want to chime in on that uh, Toto Santos. That is one of the best surfing beaches in the world on the Pacific Ocean, and uh, that drive is safe, as, and I've done it 20 times, but yeah, they have 30-foot waves there. They have competitions there all the time. And uh, 
Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, you should have gone, man. It's a cool little spot. Well, I'll go yeah. next year or the year after. Whenever I go back, I love it down there. I go down there all, as much as I can. So, uh, it's a, it's a safe drive. It's really easy. It's fun. So, yeah, hit it there you up. Go. You all right, go, later. You, you want to go serving with me, Jeff? Yeah, I'll go there because <laughs> I'm all about 30 foot waves. <laughs> K C O Z. It's time to play Know the Show with Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. You know, Speaking of 30 foot waves, the waves were huge up at Mavericks uh, yeah. over the past five days, and they've this been up the there surfing. Year? Did you see the guy in the in the uh, in the boat get flipped over from as high as I am? No. One of I, one of his buddies or somebody there that was taking for t- pictures was in a uh, a Boston Whaler type craft. Got uh, wasn't paying attention, yeah. and a big wave washed him right out of the boat, threw the boat up on the rock. I think he's okay, but this was something I saw on Facebook, so I don't know. But they didn't say that you know there was anything wrong with him, or they didn't say that he was fine either. So I'm hoping he was okay. But God, it was gnarly looking, man. Thirty footers up there at Mavericks. All right, so know the show today. Twenty bucks to Jack in the Box. It's a twenty dollar gift card. You do whatever you want with it. I recommend this new late night thing they have. This is like one of my favorite. This is sandwich. like one of my favorite gifts. Chicken I, croissant sandwich. I try to make it hard so I can uh, so I can get, uh, get hoard all these uh, gift cards for myself. <laughs> I have my own. You've done that before. Little, all you can eat. You've Jack done that. Off. I don't even know if that's legal. I don't know if you should talk about. that. I love it. Um, okay, this morning we need to know um, if a dog craps on the floor at Lowe's, who ultimately has to clean it up? Okay. Who is the one that cleans up the dog dew on the floor at a Lowe's? This is according to Frequent Jeff. I mean, Frequent Texter Jeff on the program. So who, if, if a dog craps on the floor at a Lowe's, who is sourced to clean up that dew? Let's, let's play that one again. I love that song. That always gets me fired. A good body every morning. God, I love that song so much. It's just nothing, I have a, I have nothing theory, better. I have a theory about that song, Seth. Okay. And my th- Jeff, Jeremy likes the, loves the song. No, it's great. My theory is the band Autograph... Uh, the was, album Sign In, please. Was, 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 ...was swimming in a sea of glam rock 80s bands, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like... With Rat and others. Rat and... God, you name it. I mean, there was a million other uh, glam rock 80s bands. Mm-hmm. They actually found their angle by recording that song. They're like, we're a run-of-the-mill glam rock band. There's lots of bands like us. Well, it was but a pop hit. If we, if we could sing a song about turning up the radio, radio would be forced to play us. And therefore, mm-hmm. that's what happened. And we know about Autograph, but that's all we know about Autograph is the fact that they wanted you to turn up the radio in 1984 or yeah. whatever it was. My favorite part of the song one hit. Yeah. Right in the beginning when he goes, turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Yeah, that's when Seth, Seth Blackburn turn it up. used to turn it up. Turn it up. Actually, that was before I even turned it up. Jeez, that was, what, 84? Five. Yeah. Can they come to San Luis? No. Let's get autograph here. We got we to gotta reunite them first, I think. <laughs> Just one, get them here for that one song. For one song. Yeah, really, one song. One night, one song only. <laughs> Do you think there was ever an autograph? <laughs> for a dollar. An autograph cover band? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Autograph well, knockoff? We yeah. could get, maybe I'm get sure autograph here. has a yeah, they, they, were, they, they were called forgery. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I like that. Hold yeah, on. I I like gotta, that. Now I got to hand it for a like bird. Blackburn. Like right, there where's the rim shot? Uh, uh, that's, no, that that's, is the rim shot. That belongs on a sick That's pop. the new that, rim that shot that right good. there. Nah, right. That was good. I got a million of them. Okay, um, so if a dog craps on the floor at a Lowe's, who is uh, sourced with uh, picking that up? All right. What is your name? JJR. JJR. <laughs> I love that. Uh, what is it? Who, who, who had to pick up the dog crap? The employees. Yeah, the employees yeah. of the Lowe's, not the dog owner. The dog owner just yeah. kept kept moving on. What would you say, Jay, to the JR about... Uh, I would freak out. You, yeah, you would say something to the guy, right? Oh, absolutely. If I can teach my cat to poop in a toilet, you can teach your dog to pick up his own crap. Did you ke- teach your cat to poop in a toilet, really? Yeah. It's yeah. really easy to. Yeah, that's w- really. What is the trick? What's what? It, what's the? Uh, what do you, you just put the litter, litter box there? over the the toilet. You leave it on the toilet, you know, and then you cut holes in it, bigger and bigger, until eventually you have a full toilet hole. Do you leave the box on the toilet all the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's really well, gonna wipe to his butt them, when he's done. Though. And then once you're, you know, after a little while, you stop training them, and they just know to poop in the toilet. Wow, that would. 
How long did that take? Uh, a couple months. Okay. It freaks you out, though, after a night of drinking, and you go out, and you, you look <laughs> in the toilet, and you see, like, a little floater, and you're like, what the hell? <laughs> That's awesome, J to the JR. Okay. <laughs> Hold on the line. I'm going to get you set to go. I might start going by J to the Jeremy. It just doesn't sound as good. J to the J West? Maybe that's a little I bit I thought you were stuttering or something. J to the JR. J, 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 J to the JR right I there. Like it. I like it. How was your weekend, Got Seth? Got five initials. Oh, it was great. Till, Anything exciting? You know. Nope. <laughs> you know what? It sucks. I'm sorry, no. dude. It sucks. You called it. Yeah. You said the minute that we're favored, we lose, and that's exactly what happened. Well, yeah, everybody has a bad game, but why would you pick that one? And it wasn't quite 41 nothing like in, what, 2000 when they lost to... Giants. Uh, this um, this they scored it's, first it's, though, and, uh, they and they're seven and zero when they score first. And, 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 and they well, looked, they're seven and one now. They looked so promising, I, you know, on that opening drive, and then stupid game had to be an hour. What the hell happened? Yeah, I you know well, I I don't think Philadelphia's all that so, great. They're probably going to run to you know, New so, England, but yeah. Mm. Listen, listen to what happened in the red zone challenge. Okay, we were looking, we were monitoring this behind the uh. scenes. Uh, Burn and Jim Kozik have moved up to. The front of the pack. Both people Eagles that we talked fans, to right? last, yeah. He both. Well, I don't know if Vern is, but Jim, on his profile, it's Eagles uh, like Luchadore mask or something. I, we along know Jim. Them. He went to the golf tournament with us. Yeah, he's a big Eagles fan. He went to the porn star golf tournament with us with Vince Neil like mm. a decade ago. Right. And, and so Vern, I know he's an Eagles fan. Vern was actually the winner of the Survivor game on the Red Zone Challenge, so he's been doing well all season, oh, based yeah. on his probably his Survivor picks. They both are tied at 190 points. Meaning that, in theory, you would think that Jim, because his logo is an Eagles logo... He'll pick the Eagles. He'll, he'll homer it up and pick the Eagles, meaning Vern should pick the Patriots, right? Or, but if he picks the Eagles, they cancel out. So Then it yeah. would go to the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. That's what I mean. Oh, the do score. we know that yet? Oh, pretty, okay, so the final No, score, we don't know so. that till the end of the season. By the way... Yeah, no, and that is the tiebreaker. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, person, the person who um, won this week... It's pretty amazing, actually. Um, it was uh, Skyler. He Almost lived, nailed the, the tiebreaker. He door. lives up in San Miguel. He had the tiebreaker as the Philadelphia Eagles scoring 34 and the Minnesota Vikings scoring 6. Mm. He was one, He's way off. Well, yeah. One and four off. I one was, point I, off and four off. He thought they would only score two field goals? That's crazy. Or, or miss the extra point, you know. But then Seth's here to say that well, Blake Ross no longer plays yeah. for our team, so that well, doesn't happen. If the game was five minutes long, then uh, <laughs> we're, we'd be going to the Super Bowl. Blew yeah. them out. Well, you know, better now. now. Now I'm not distracted. I was busy Super Bowl Sunday anyway, so. <laughs> you You're know. so funny. Yeah, I know. That's exactly I how I was do. when the Seahawks were out. I'm like, I'm glad I'm done getting stressed out over yeah. these. It kind of Russell is. Wilson running around like yeah. a jackass, and well, then these guys not letting this happen. And then, and then you're, there's and your, like, your, I your, can just focus on something else. Then people like your Craig and Dicks out there, that you know, <laughs> they, they just they just love you know. It, but he was doing like his his team, the Packers, watching the game. Yeah, so. yeah, just well, Craig like the and, Packers. Listen, were. Craig and Brink, Craig and Dick, I love that. Craig and Brink is, and we're talking about Steve from Woods, a Packers fan. But he's always on the outside because the Packers have sucked for well, a long time now. That, but he takes any opportunity to yeah, you know to, to make the, it, uh, yeah, the shots and Freud and whatever that's yeah. called. But uh, I told him, well, uh, I'm going to tell him when I see him. But <laughs> you know how uh, Aaron Rodgers got his collar bone broken like by a Viking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have the same guy break both of his collarbones. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, you know, be nice about it, but you know, just a couple of broken collarbones, no big deal. All right. So, uh, you know, he's up sorry. on the he's up on the jokes with Seth today. He I'm sorry. Sir. No, I, no, I, no. It was just uh, no, it's, easy on it's, it's such a familiar feeling, though. That's the suck part yeah, of it. I and, know. You know. Hopefully Philadelphia can lose a couple more and join us. Can I tell you, it's a lot. It's a lot better not having your team make the playoffs at all because then you don't have any fun. Well, you know, right. there getting was... to that point is, and and not getting to the promised land is is annoying. Well, yeah, and it, it's it's almost like what's the point? You know? Especially and when then, you come down to that last game. Yeah, and then some some people discount the whole season. Well, you know, we did the win fourteen play. and lose four. You know. The last play of the Super Bowl. Well, it's like throwing an interception on the last play of the Super Bowl. All you had to do was run the ball in. Theoretically, that's pretty, son of a bitch. That's pretty annoying too. We'll, we'll, <laughs> ne we'll never know. We'll never know. Who do you like, Philly or New England? Who do I like or who do I want to win? Yeah. <laughs> um, who do you who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if Philadelphia can recreate it, and uh, but it's just New England, just the, the mystique. They some they like Jeff said they. 
They just win. They, I got a game plan. Win. It's called Bill Belichick two weeks find to a prepare way. for you, and it's tough. Break Brady's kneecaps. Yeah. That's it. That's that's yeah, how you win. Take the penalty. It's like in hockey, the goon. Yeah. The guy yeah. gets thrown out of the game. Well, he wasn't scoring any goals anyway. Yeah, yeah. mission yeah. accomplished. Take out goon. Take out Gretzky. Yeah. Oh, it's the last game of the year. Oh, Get him ejected. This fifteen Super Bowl. yard penalty and a fine. Big deal. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on ninety three point three KZOZ.